For over a century, Neanderthals have been stuck with perhaps the worst reputation of any extinct human relative. Cavemen, brutes, savage primitives who couldn't compete with our superior intellect. But what if I told you this entire narrative, this whole identity, was built on a spectacular scientific blunder? Okay, let's go. So well, make that 400,000 years. The defendant? Homo neanderthalensis, better known as the Neanderthal. The charge? Being a primitive, brainless brute who stumbled through the Ice Age with nothing but raw strength and a bad attitude. For over a century, this image has stuck. So how do we get them so wrong? And what does the real evidence tell us about our closest evolutionary cousins, a species whose DNA still flows through many of us today? It's time for a retrial. The evidence has been mounting. And today's verdict might surprise you. To understand why Neanderthals got such a bad rap, we need to travel back to 1908, when French paleontologist Marcelin Boulle published the first complete study of Neanderthal anatomy. Working with a skeleton discovered in La Chapelle aux Saints, Boulle reconstructed a creature that looked more ape than human, hunched posture, bent knees, a protruding face, and a brain case suggesting limited intelligence. This became the definitive image of Neanderthals that dominated scientific and popular thought for decades. It shaped everything from museum exhibits to cartoons. The word Neanderthal became synonymous with primitive and brutish. But here's the critical failure in Bull's analysis. The skeleton he studied belonged to an elderly male who suffered from severe arthritis and other pathologies. The slouched posture and worn appearance weren't typical Neanderthal traits, they were the markers of age and disease. It would be like judging all of modern humanity based on studying a single 80-year-old with degenerative joint disease. When scientists later re-examined the same skeleton with modern techniques, they discovered that a healthy Neanderthal would have walked upright just like us, but the damage was done for nearly a century our extinct cousins were portrayed as evolutionary failures, creatures too primitive to compete with our superior Homo sapiens ancestors. This mischaracterization wasn't just bad science, it fed into dangerous early 20th century narratives about human progress and racial hierarchies. By portraying Neanderthals as less evolved brutes, it reinforced the idea that some forms of humanity were inherently lesser than others. You still picture Neanderthals clumsily swinging crude clubs. Prepare to have your mind blown if you think they were just bashing rocks together. Think again. Neanderthals mastered a technique called levelois, a kind of Stone Age 3D printing. Far from primitive. Neanderthal technology demonstrates sophisticated understanding of material science and engineering principles. Their signature Mosterian toolkit included finely crafted scrapers, points, and knives that required not just strength, but precision and planning. At sites like Kabara Cave in Israel, archaeologists found these tools, some so precise they could slice through hide or carve wood like a modern utility knife. They didn't just make tools, they planned ahead. Neanderthals selected the best flint from miles away, like they had a prehistoric Home Depot on speed dial. But the real game changer came in 2013 when researchers discovered something truly unexpected in Italy. Neanderthals weren't just using natural materials, they were chemically transforming them. Analysis of tools from multiple sites revealed that Neanderthals were producing birch bark tar a complex adhesive used to half stone points to wooden shafts. Creating this substance requires carefully controlled heating of birch bark in the absence of oxygen. Essentially, a prehistoric chemical engineering process. Think about that for a second. Making birch tar isn't intuitive. You can't simply throw bark in a fire and get adhesive. It requires understanding material properties, maintaining specific temperatures, and following a multi-step process, knowledge that would have been transmitted through generations, and in case you're thinking this was a lucky accident. Similar adhesives have been found across Europe spanning thousands of years, suggesting this wasn't a one-off discovery, but standardized technology. That's not brute strength. That's engineering. Imagine a Neanderthal stirring a tar pot, probably muttering, This better stick, 
or I'm hunting with my bare hands again. For decades, one of the supposed smoking guns against Neanderthal intelligence was their apparent lack of symbolic thought and artistic expression. Cave art, jewelry, figurines. These were supposedly unique to Homo sapiens, the hallmarks of our cognitive superiority. That narrative collapsed in 2018, using uranium-thorium dating, a technique that measures the decay of radioactive elements in the thin mineral layers covering cave paintings. Researchers analyzed artworks in three Spanish caves. The results? Mind-blowing. The paintings were at least 64,000 years old, predating the arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe by about 20,000 years. These weren't crude scribbles either. The caves contained sophisticated red ochre hand stencils, geometric patterns, and representations of animals. The only possible artists, Neanderthals. The evidence doesn't stop there. In multiple sites across Europe, archaeologists have found shells and eagle talons with purposefully drilled holes, suggesting they were worn as jewelry or pendants. Some bare traces of ochre, a natural pigment that has no practical use beyond decoration. Why does this matter? Because art and ornamentation aren't just pretty things, they're windows into cognitive complexity. Creating and appreciating art requires abstract thinking, planning, and a sense of aesthetics. Wearing decorative items suggests awareness of self-image and social communication. Perhaps most astonishing is the discovery in Brunichel Cave in France. A carefully arranged structure of broken stalagmites deep inside the cave, dating to 176,000 years ago. This site required not just venturing nearly a quarter mile into total darkness, with fire for illumination, but also moving and arranging over two tons of material into deliberate circular structures. Perhaps the most moving evidence reshaping our understanding of Neanderthals comes from how they treated their dead and their sick. At multiple sites across Europe and the Middle East, archaeologists have found Neanderthal remains carefully positioned in what appear to be intentional burials. Some contain grave goods, offerings like flowers identified by pollen analysis, animal bones, and even ochre pigment. The famous flower burial at Shinidar Cave in Iraq provides particularly compelling evidence. Pollen clusters around the skeletons suggest flowers were placed with the body, one of the earliest known examples of funerary ritual. But perhaps even more revealing than how Neanderthals treated their dead is how they cared for their living. Meet Shinidar One, a Neanderthal male who survived into his 40s despite being partially blind, deaf, and having a withered arm. Or consider the individual from La Chapelle aux Saints, the very same skeleton that led to the brutish stereotype, who survived well into old age despite losing most of his teeth and suffering from debilitating arthritis. These individuals couldn't have survived alone. Their communities must have supported and cared for them, sometimes for decades. This isn't just compassion, though that's remarkable enough. It's evidence of sophisticated social organization and resource management that allowed groups to support non-hunting members. And they weren't just caring, they were medicating. Analysis of dental plaque from El Cidron Cave in Spain revealed traces of plants with no nutritional value but significant medicinal properties, including a natural form of aspirin and antibiotic compounds. When one individual showed evidence of a dental abscess, researchers found traces of poplar bark containing the active ingredient in aspirin and antibiotic mold. This wasn't random plant consumption. It appears to be targeted, knowledge-based healthcare. If Neanderthals were so sophisticated, why did they disappear while we survived? For decades? The answer seems simple. We outcompeted them with our supposedly superior intelligence. But like so much about Neanderthal science, that narrative has crumbled under new evidence. First, let's appreciate just how successful Neanderthals were. They thrived in Europe and Western Asia for over 300,000 years, surviving multiple ice ages, massive climate shifts, and changing ecosystems. For perspective, our species, Homo sapiens, has only existed for about 300,000 years, and our modern industrial civilization is just a couple hundred years old. Far from being evolutionary failures, Neanderthals were one of the most successful human species in history. 
Their disappearance around 40,000 years ago coincided with both extreme climate fluctuations and the arrival of Homo sapiens in their territories. But rather than a simple tale of replacement, the evidence suggests something more complex and intimate. Genetic analysis confirms that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens interbred. If you have European or Asian ancestry, approximately 1-4% to of your DNA comes from Neanderthals. That's not what happens when one species completely outcompetes another. Recent modeling suggests the Neanderthal population was always relatively small. Perhaps never more than 70,000 individuals spread across Europe. When facing climate stress and habitat changes, these smaller populations would have been more vulnerable. What likely happened wasn't a dramatic conquest, but a complex process of interaction, interbreeding, and gradual absorption into the larger Homo sapiens population, combined with the challenges of adapting to rapidly changing environments. The more we learn, the less their disappearance looks like a failure and more like a contribution to our shared human story. A failure and more like a contribution to our shared human story. So, what's the real story of the Neanderthal? They were artists, engineers, and caregivers who shaped our past and live in our DNA. What do you think? Were they as smart as us? Or even smarter in their own way? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you loved uncovering this truth, hit that like button and subscribe for more mind-blowing dives into our ancient world. Thanks here for watching video.